Today on the breakdown, let's talk Joe Biden's disastrous student loan forgiveness order and the deadly repercussions of his border policy. Hello, I'm Mike Huckabee. It's August 31st, and this is The Breakdown. Now, before we get started, I've got a question for you. Do you think anything will come out of the FBI's ongoing investigation into Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago papers? Tell me your thoughts in the comments section below. And if you haven't already, it's a good time to subscribe to the channel below. Be sure and click the notification bell. Also, leave a like so that YouTube is more likely to share this video with Democrats. They'll do it maybe that way. Well, first up, uh, this week, it was a time when the White House was trying to defend Joe Biden's order that we're just going to up and forgive $10,000 of student loans, 20,000 if you have a Pell Grant, for people with an income up to $125,000, or if you're a married couple, $250,000. Now, $250,000, even $125,000 is hardly poverty income. You probably could pay off your student loans. Oh, you might have to make a few sacrifices like not having as many lattes at Starbucks or maybe having to cancel subscriptions to Netflix or uh, perhaps HBO. But gee whiz, you took out the loan. Your neighbor across the street didn't. So how come He's got to pay all of his bills and then suck it up and pay yours. Every American, every American taxpayer will be on the hook for $2,000 to pay off this bribe of Joe Biden to get people to vote for Democrats in November. And that's what it is. It's a vote buying scheme. But even more fascinating is the White House attempt to spin it. And they're having a little bit of a time doing it because the reaction hasn't been universally favorable in large measure because a lot of people resent that they had to pay off not just their student loans, but their car loans, their business loans, their home loans, their consumer loans. And Joe steps in and says to people who did get a college degree, who should be making more money, who should be able to pay it off, well, we're going to write yours off. That way, maybe you'll vote for us. Well, forgive the cynicism, but Martha McCallum, had Jared uh, Bernstein on her program this week on Fox. Jared Bernstein's one of the economic advisors to President Biden. And she kind of put him in the corner when she asked about how Joe Biden is justifying putting this executive order into motion. Let's watch. I just think that people do question the authority of using the HEROES Act and using pandemic emergency. You've lifted Title 42 and the CDC restrictions are largely gone. But now you're going to tell us that there's an emergency that requires these individuals who can't pay the money back to basically be, you know, under a HEROES Act? Actually, that, that's a I'm tough telling thing you, for a not- lot of people to understand. Actually, all I'm telling you is that the legal authority to grant debt relief uh, exists under this legislation. Yeah, he was scrambling because the HEROES Act was supposed to be for people who had done heroic things in the pandemic. This has nothing to do with the pandemic, and it certainly doesn't mean you're heroic because you didn't pay your debt. It's insane. But there's a lot of insanity. In fact, it continues. Insanity at the White House is Corrine Jean-Pierre going to the White House press room and claiming that Joe Biden really does have a plan in place for the border. Watch. It is not that simple. It's not just that people are walking uh, across uh, across the border. We have a, we have a, a plan in place. Uh, this is not like switching the, the, the lights on, right? This is going to take a process. We are fixing a broken system that was actually left uh, by the last administration. Two big lies there, big lies. Big, big lies. First, when she says we have a plan in place, you do? Well, you might ought to turn it on because the one you're using is failing. And then she says, and we're trying to fix this problem that was left by the previous administration. I don't know of anything she's ever said from the podium that is more ludicrous and laughable than that. The border was secure. She didn't inherit a problem. Her boss, Joe Biden, created one because on the very first day of his presidency, the very day of his inauguration, he basically flung the doors wide open. He stopped the building of the wall and he said, like many Pearl of years ago, y'all come. And boy, have they ever come. That is absolutely insane. Now, also at the White House, Peter Ducey, Fox News reporter, um, I don't think he's very popular in the White House press room. 
because he asked real questions, something that the other reporters, I guess, aren't capable of doing. But he wanted to know how come it is that a tennis player cannot fly into the United States because he's unvaccinated. He can't come. He can't play tennis in the big tennis tournaments. But if you're an illegal, you just walk across the border and nobody demands that you have a vaccination. How do you explain that? Well, here's how Corrine Jean-Pierre tried to explain it. Somebody unvaccinated comes over on a plane. You say that's not okay. Somebody walks into Texas or Arizona unvaccinated. They're allowed to stay. But, Why? But that's not how it works. Yeah, like we actually, no. Well, I know that that's not what you guys want to happen, but that is what, ha what has happened. But that's not, it's not like somebody walks over and <laughs> that's not, that's, that's not how. That's exactly what's happening. We, well, Thousands of people are walking in a day. Some of them turn themselves over. Some of them are caught. Tens of thousands a week are not. That is what is happening. That is exactly what's happening. And there's so much video of it. It's not like it's a hidden secret. And for her to say, that's not how it works. This isn't happening. Yes, Corrine, it is happening. I know that Kamala Harris is the border czar. She's been put in charge of fixing it. What a fine job she's doing. We're up about 2,000% on border crossings, illegal border crossings. We have no idea who's coming across. They're coming across so fast, nobody can keep up with it. And for her to outright say, yes, um, uh, we, we aren't looking at a situation where people are walking across the border, that's exactly what we are looking at. Uh, it, it's amazing. There's no credibility in this White House. Now, part of the problem of the border being open, it's not just people coming across. It's tons of fentanyl getting across that's killing hundreds of thousands of Americans, not at the border, but all across the country. Joe Biden, in a political speech this week, pretended that he really cared about that, but he doesn't seem to understand that it's his policies that's allowing this to happen. Here's what I mean. Here's how many people are dying of opioid overdoses now. And by the way, laced with fentanyl. The Attorney General Sapiro can tell you more about that you never want to know for a fact. For real, it's been, he's been such a strong leader on this. But we're going to impose tougher penalties for deadly fentanyl trafficking. That's poisoning communities across this country. This is a key part of the unity agenda I'm announcing in my, that I announced in my State of the Union address. We can do this. We have to do this. We'll make America safer. Yeah, his unity agenda, right? He was going to unify the country. Remember that on Inauguration Day? Go bring us together. Last week, he called 74 million of us MAGA fascist. Certainly warmed my heart. I'm sure it did yours. Made me want to really be in unity with him. And now he's talking about a unity a plan. Well, here's some unity. Instead of just increasing the penalties for people who bring the fentanyl and get caught, why don't you keep it from getting here in the first place? What a novel idea. But how would you do something like that, Joe Biden? Here's a thought. Seal the border. That's what President Trump had effectively done. You opened it back up and now you act like that you've got to fix it. That's like a fireman starting the fire so he can get in his fire truck and then pretend to go put it out. It's exactly what it's like. And we're not that stupid. Well, a year ago, a year ago this month, Joe Biden pulled us out of Afghanistan. He didn't have a plan. The plan was a disaster. Even though we claim we never leave Americans behind, we left hundreds of Americans behind. And 13 of our own servicemen and women were unnecessarily killed as people were trying to bug out of Afghanistan in the botched withdrawal. When asked what the White House had done to honor those servicemen and women, this is the answer that America was given. Um, how does the president plan to mark that occasion as he plans to speak to the American people? Did he uh, plan to honor the lives of the, the 13 service members who were involved? So, the as, as you know, uh, last week on Friday, we did put out, um, uh, the president put out a statement, uh, released a statement where he named each of the 13 troops who were tragically killed. I hope you got that. He put out a statement and he named the dead men and women from Afghanistan's mission that was totally botched. Put out a statement. Now he was on vacation, so he didn't give it in person. He probably obviously didn't write it. His staff wrote a statement on his behalf and he named the people that were left behind and died. 
Well, thanks for watching. I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the notification bell below. Please leave a like and tell me in the comments, do you think anything will come out of the FBI's ongoing investigation into President Trump's Mar-a-Lago papers? And also remember, if you want more of my news analysis and commentary, sign up for my newsletter at MikeHuckabee.com. It is totally free. That's going to do it for this edition of The Breakdown. I'm Mike Huckabee.